This is Madame Paula Tabule, or Tybule. Uh, Paula is the director of the Foyer de Fia uh, orphanage here uh, in the Critical Path Home for Girls. Um, we met Paula just after the earthquake and have been working with her uh, for the past two years, um, uh, trying to support her efforts to care for approximately 70, 65 to 70 girls, correct? Um, um, most of whom have been with Paula most of their, uh, most of their lives. Um, one of the critical needs that the orphanage has had for some time, in addition to uh, all of the other necessities uh, that, that the children have for clothing and food and, and shelter, has been clean water. And um, uh, We've been struggling here at Foyo de Fio for some time uh, without um, a system that could provide sufficient clean water for all of the girls for drinking and for bathing. And, um, and now we have put that in place and I just wanted to introduce Paula uh, as our dear friend and, um, and partner with Critical Path and let the people know who are watching this video um, who it is that we're investing our efforts and our resources in support of here. And Paula um, has been a wonderful caregiver and an inspiration to all of us, but a wonderful caregiver to these girls and an example for us. I'd like to just ask you, Paula, if you will, uh, to take a moment so that people can get to know you uh, and, and understand who we're supporting here in Haiti uh, from a personal level. Would you tell us just a little bit about your background? And I, You were born in Haiti, correct? Yes. Um, and lived here uh, as a young girl. And then tell us just a little bit about your life, right, if you Right, and I went to the States and I spent about 20 years there. I came back to taking care of those kids, those often. So uh, I've been working here in that orphanage for 23 years now. And I do my best to help them, but I have a lot of difficulties, financial difficulties, because uh, here it's very tight, you don't have any help, so food and everything. Thank God, critical part to uh, Charlie, you know, he's giving me a good, good help about the water and thank you very, very much for the installation because I was very concerned with that cholera, you know, is very contagious. Those kids, I was very concerned because they were drinking the water, regular water. So now it's a blessing that we have that, uh, how do you call it? <laughs> we have a water treatment water system. Water treatment system. Yes. And I want to thank anyone who helped Charlie. And you're really helping the poor people. That's very good. I'm Charlie Bell with Critical Path International. We're at Foya de Fia Orphanage at Delma 19 in Port-au-Prince, uh, an orphanage that was adopted by Critical Path uh, almost two years ago. We came uh, about two days after the earthquake in January 2010 um, and met. Jean Robert Caniel, uh, Dr. Caniel. Jean Robert is a medical doctor and is now the director of operations for Critical Path International in Haiti. And at the time, Jean Robert and his sister were operating the orphanage here, Foya de Fia, um, and were very in very desperate uh, conditions. Uh, their uh, their water system that they had previously, a reverse osmosis system, had been uh, damaged and was. Um, uh, inoperable and what we have done is come back with a, uh, a water treatment system to give clean water to the 65 to 70 girls that are here at Fort Um As we've discussed before, uh, contaminated water and waterborne diseases are the number one cause of infant mortality in, in Haiti. Uh, over 80 percent of the children in Haiti don't have access to clean water for drinking and for bathing. So by providing uh, this clean water system to Foya de Fia Orphanage or the Critical Path Home for Girls here, uh, we're going to be able to ensure that these children are protected or in a safe uh, environment with clean water to drink and to bathe in. What did you guys just do? <laughs> this frame contained the old filters, the old membrane filters. And this is a UV canister, the ultraviolet light canister, which kills the bacteria, the microorganisms, uh, the other harmful, <coughs> excuse me, contaminants in the water. 
we're replacing this ultraviolet light filtration system with a brand new system. These three filters are being replaced with a high carbon membrane system of filters, three new filters. We didn't need this old frame, so we removed the whole frame. We're going to reprogram this with a different control panel, so we don't need the old control panel. We're going to try to make this a much more simple, low maintenance, um, and, and efficient system to operate. Uh, it's much more fault, uh, much more fault tolerant. What I'd like to do is to um, ask um, Jean Robert Caniel to tell us just a little bit about his background. Uh, Jean Robert is, a, is originally from Haiti, but he's been educated outside of the, the country. And, uh, and then I would like Rich, who is with our uh, partner Alatech in North Carolina, one of our critical path partners, uh, the company by the name of Alatech that manufactures and produces this water system and donated it to critical path. Uh, Rich and, um, and his partner Michael here both work for Alatech and they came down as the technical reps for the company to help us install the system. So, Jean Robert, uh, tell us just a little bit, if you would, about your background and how we met. Yeah, and... man. Oh, my name is Jean Robert. I'm a medical doctor. I have my sister with the uh, orphanage. So, I've been working with her for almost uh, five years. And with Critical Path, I've been here for almost two years. Two years, yes. 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 So, that's what I can say. Well, without, without Jean Robert's uh, guidance and leadership and wisdom, uh, critical Path would not have been able to accomplish what we have here over the past two years, where we're now providing uh, protection and care for uh, and the, the essential needs for the children here at Foyer de Fia, about 65 or 70 girls that are under John Robert's right. care and sister. Plus, uh, with John Robert's uh, direction we're also and support, we're also able to uh, provide ongoing care for the children at Rosamina Orphanage, another 110 uh, children, most of which are infants, and then we also care for the children out at the the uh, you know, uh, the Taba tent camp, which is located out near the U.S. Embassy. Embassy. How many children do you think we are caring for out there now, Jean? Uh, here we have 73. Of uh, uh, Wismina, it's about 110. Jean Bercos must, must be let's say 100 and something. Yes, I would think so over 100 children. Two, uh, almost, we, t we can say like 300 children. Yes, all together. So, thank you. Um, Jean Robert is, um, uh, is a man of tremendous integrity and compassion and uh, has been a great friend personally and also a, a tremendous supporter of Critical Path. He's been a volunteer leader for us uh, since we established Critical Path in Haiti and we're very thankful for his, for his friendship and for his leadership. Uh, Rich, again, um, from Alatech in North Carolina and Michael. Rich, would you tell us just a little bit about um, what we've done today, we have a little bit of information on your background already, um, but would you tell us a little bit about the system that we've installed today, and I'll get out of your way and let, let you and Michael uh, explain what we've installed. This system is now complete, functional, uh, and it's providing clean water not only for the children here at the orphanage, but they will uh, produce sufficient water and surplus, and they will be able to sell it commercially and to, to, to generate a source of income uh, for the girls. So go ahead, Rich. All right. Um, my name is Rich Carrick. I work with Allotech Incorporated. Allotech is the uh, manufacturer of the water system that we installed here. Now, uh, Michael came down on a trip several months ago and kind of scoped out the, uh, the work. I'm going to let him talk about that. But, uh, but what we did is we removed some of what was already here that wasn't functioning and installed this system here. If you gentlemen will let me uh, sure. jump in here. This is, the, um, this is the system that we brought down. It is a four-stage filtration process. The first stage is a sediment filter. That removes your, uh, your large particles, your debris, dirt, that, those sort of contaminants. The second stage is a five micron carbon block. Uh, the carbon block removes taste and odor and things like that. And in addition, with it being a five micron, it's going to remove a lot more of the particles that are, uh, that are trapped in the, in the water. The next stage is a 0.5 micron carbon block. Now with this filter, we've virtually captured everything in the water that's not dissolved into it like salts would be like salt water. Um, but everything else, all the particles, any, uh, any, any bacteria, things like that should be removed by the end of this stage. And we add a, um, a, a final stage which is the ultraviolet disinfection so that if anything living made it through um, any of these stages, the ultraviolet lamp 
will uh, it will be exposed to that light and it will be killed and the water is uh, is pure coming out the other side so there's no risk of, um, of any type of uh, cysts or giarda or uh, E. coli or any of that kind of stuff uh, it'll all be killed by the time it comes through there so it's fit for human consumption at that point so what we did is we took this system and we incorporated it into an existing uh, water network that was already there there's a uh, raw water tank um, in another location and that water is fed down, it comes down through this pipe, um, through our pump, and um, from out of the pump it goes into these two existing filters that were already there. These are two media filters, uh, I believe they're sand, yeah, sand, sand media sand. filters, and, uh, and these will take out any of the heavy dirt. Um, they're not necessary with, the, uh, with the, the water system that we have, but what they'll do is they'll allow the life of the filters to be extended because these will trap a lot more dirt and then they can be backwashed. So when they start to get dirty, you backwash them and you dump all the muddy uh, dirt back out of them, which we've actually piped now into a drain. Um, so we've got two, two filters here and they'll do a pre-filtration for us. Not essential, but beneficial to extend the life of the, of the filters. Then from here they come through the filters. Um, be, there's an indicator light that uh, they'll normally be on when it's running. We're not running right now. Uh, but there'll be a blue indicator light that will tell you that the ultraviolet light, not only that it has power to it, but that it's, a, that it's actually functioning. If the bulb, if this indicator light goes out, it means that, um, that your, your bulb is not working and you don't have that disinfection guarantee. Which could just mean that you either don't have power or your bulb has uh, uh, the life of the bulb has reached its limit and the bulb needs replaced. Um, from there, we have um, the water comes around into this holding tank, and so it's fit for use from here on. Um, and in addition, we've got um, we've got a, a secondary pump that will allow the water to be pumped up over here to the distribution area where we've got um, a couple uh, a couple outlets that we can uh, fill bottles and things like that. If you want take the camera over to the window, you can see that. Um, so those are those can be used to fill the containers for uh, to, to So we move the five gallons five gallon water bottles over here, fill them and then um, we use this as a commercial sales window, John Bear, correct? Yeah. Uh, where people in the neighborhood can come and purchase clean water um, and it's a source of income for the orphanage here. So we have the first clean water uh, being produced by the new uh, filtration system here at Coya de Fia. Um, result of a lot of hard work and uh, we are going to get of it. We should be some Good. Yeah, it is. Salute.